Hi, my name is Andrew Park, and this is a brief and formal introduction to the guiding principles to, for the inclusion of LGBTI people into development programs and policies. They were recently issued by RFSL, the Swedish LGBTQ Federation. I co-authored them, and what I'd like to talk about is why were they created, uh, who are they meant for, what do they say, and then a few notes on terminology. Uh, RFSL and CETA, the Swedish International Development Agency, the arm of the government that handles international development cooperation for Sweden, have been leaders in looking at the intersection between sexuality, gender, and development. Uh, so I'm very pleased that they have issued these principles. Uh, now, why were they developed? Historically, LGBTI issues have been seen from a human rights framework. But recently, the UN General Assembly passed a resolution adopting the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. These goals apply to everyone in all countries, including LGBTI people. So this offers an opportunity to integrate issues of LGBTI people into global development policies and priorities. In terms of who they were meant for, let me just put the language of the principles up on the screen. Uh, these guiding principles are meant to guide all actors in designing, implementing, and monitoring development activities related to LGBTI people. They're based on scientific knowledge, uh, empirical experience, as well as current norms in both the human rights sector and the development sector. Now, in terms of what the principles say, uh, if you look at the publication, there's a list of 13 principles, probably too small to see on the screen, and for each principle, there is a short statement and then about a page of text explaining the principle itself. But let me group them together. Principles one through four deal with the realities of LGBTI people. Who are they? Where are they? How does SOGIESC, or sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, and sex characteristics, how do these char characteristics uh, relate to development? Um, these realities should shape how development programs are designed, implemented, and monitored. Principles number five through eight deal with the role of LGBTI communities and LGBTI data. So this talks about how um, communities relate to development activities in terms of ownership, alignment, and accountability. And they also suggest how to proceed with gathering data about LGBTI populations. And finally, the last set of principles deal with development agencies and practitioners themselves. What do uh, development agencies and practitioners need to keep in mind and to account for when formulating uh, policy and programs? Uh, I wanted to say a few words about terminology. We use the term LGBTI here, but oftentimes that's not going to be the right term to use. Uh, because if you look at local populations in a particular country or culture, uh, other terms are going to be more appropriate. So the term LGBTI is used mainly as a placeholder, and when these principles are applied to particular populations, you should use the um, terms that are appropriate. Uh, thank you very much, and you can turn to some of the other videos for particular explanations of each of the principles.